Hey everyone, we're the Ortigos and I'm Nick. I'm Leslie. And we're here to give you a real world tour of our 2015 Airstream. It's an FC RB twin. That's flying cloud rear bedroom with twin beds. Check it out. All right, so when I say real world walkthrough, I mean, we're gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're not gonna really hold back any problems that we have with this 2015 Airstream. This is our second camper. Our first one was a Scamp. It was old, it was like a 2003. It was a 19 foot fiberglass Scamp, had a fifth wheel, really cool, unique trailer. And uh, we posted a video of it online. Yeah. And a lot of people were really interested in it. So we wanted to do this kind of the same thing here with the Airstream. And Leslie, my lovely wife here, is gonna give us the tour of the interior and then I'll kind of help out as we move around to the outside. So Leslie, what do you say? Let's do it. Welcome to our rolling crib. All right, so we recently got back from a 19 day trip in the camper. So we kind of left it as is and just kind of give you an idea of what it's like when it's packed up. Um, not completely, but kind of like what an experience is like. So come on in, Nick. Um, we will start kind of underneath this table. So there is a decent amount of storage in this camper completely. But I'll start with this compartment that we often kind of forget even because it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, but it's pretty huge. So we put stuff in here that we don't need access to very frequently, like some rain jackets, some laundry materials. And it's really a good spot up under here to store a lot of stuff that you don't need frequently. So this actually converts into a bed. So this table, I won't do it at this moment, but this table kind of goes down and then these cushions go across and you've got a really big bed here. Um, you could fit two people. Um, we haven't fit two people there before, but you probably could And Airstream, I think says that you could fit two people there. Um, but it's really comfortable. These cushions, very comfortable. Um, this leather is really soft and supple and we put sheets on it, bedding on it, and it's a really nice little bed there. All right, so up above here, we've got cabinet number one. This is kind of our telecommunications cabinet. We've got a Blu-ray player, which I don't think we've ever used. We've got um, some remotes that are Velcroed to the top here. We use an Apple TV, and Nick has wired all that up with mobile internet and stuff so that um, we are always connected on the road. Lots of plugs and stuff in here. We also keep some random stuff like koozies in there. There is a sound system that we do Bluetooth our phone um, to the sound system and play music sometimes. But it's probably fair to say we use the actual like Bluetooth speaker outside more than we use the sound system, wouldn't you say? Probably so, because the Bluetooth is not very far on this thing. So if you walk very far from your camper and your phone's in your pocket, you'll lose your Bluetooth connectivity pretty quickly. And, and then you've got this microphone up here um, and that actually ties into that unit and that's so you can like take phone calls in the camper without using your hands we've never we've used never it never done that and it just seems silly in today's world of airpods and just yeah. things it's just uh, i don't think it's that functional a lot has a changed dated. in yeah. six years there uh cabinet number two this is a child cabinet this is where we keep our little girl's um clothing this is a bag that we keep full of her clothes and then toys games it's kind of like the multi media section for the child crayons things of that nature so i think we should point out too while we're here i don't know if you were going to do this or not so don't let me steal your thunder but one of the best things about an airstream is the fact that you have these great windows yeah in totally. an airstream like when you're in this camper as opposed to our last one it feels like you're outside when you're inside the way it opens up yeah our last camper felt kind of like a little uh dome and this one feels kind of like you're outside i work from the camper a lot from the road and i sit right here and i put my laptop and my mouse and i spread out in this section and i've got all this wonderful light to make me feel like i'm not just in this kind of shell as i'm working it's really comfortable space and we have some little plants little fake, fake plants right. to make it feel homey um, also, this is a bed. So this pulls out right here. This cushion comes off here and then you've got a whole nother bed. This is generally where the six year old sleeps every night. And that's because we don't have to mess up the whole living room for her to sleep. So she sleeps there. When we have our older kids with us, they sleep here 
and but that does require you know taking the table down all right we've got some really nice big windows like we said they're open right now we have these shades that kind of lock in place there. When I've been you, really pleased with these shades, by the way. Those, don't you think? Like, yeah. they're super durable. They are. They attract I will easy. say, um, they're hard to clean. Yeah. I've really tried to clean these little spots off. Um, magic erasers. Hadn't figured out a way to do it. So if you know, put us a comment and let us know. What's great about this window right here that Leslie's working on, as well as this skylight, I'll try to get it here. The great thing about those two is when you wake up in the morning and you're still like walking around having your coffee, you're in your robe, your pajamas or whatever, it's a way to let natural light into the camper without opening your shades and like everyone can look in as they're walking their dog and walking past your camper, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and it lets in so much light that at times I think that the lights are already on, but they're not. It's just from the skylight. So yeah, really good light from there. Obviously, we've got our TV here. It's been around. And here's our Apple TV, but we also scan for whatever local on-air channels we can when we get there. Um, pretty comfortable to sit here and watch a movie. We do that often. And if we can't watch a movie, if we don't have good internet, if we don't have good cable or whatnot, we will set the old iPad up here and download something and watch it straight from the, t the table. The good thing too about the TV is it does tie in to these speakers that are kind of like scattered throughout the front and the back of the camper. So if you want that louder stereo sound in here as you're watching a movie. You're yeah, it does go. have really good sound. All right, I'm gonna transition to this cabinetry under here. So this cabinet is kind of a, um, kind of like a big pantry for us. And it is really large. Um, to give you some perspective, that's a two liter container of olive oil and it fits easily in there. I mean, here's a six pack of tea. Fits easily in there. Don't forget your value pack of Pop-Tarts. Uh, so all of that type of stuff we put in here. We like to put our heavier stuff down below um, just to keep the weight heavier. And if something were to fall, it wouldn't have far to fall. And that's just good practice with any camper. You wanna keep your heaviest stuff down low and more towards the center. We keep these little baskets in here, which are good because it keeps your cans from rolling around and stuff like that. We keep a lot of canned goods in here, pastas, things of that nature. Um, you get the gist there. It also makes it easy to transport it back into the house when you are done. Um, one pro tip that we have found is we actually use laundry baskets to load up the camper. So we will get just a traditional laundry basket and we put all of our food and um, refrigerated items in there and we can carry a lot more at one time. All Don't right. forget about this hidden compartment down here. Ooh, good call. Also gets kind of dirty in here, walking in and out, in and out. Keep a broom right here. It's one of these that extends out, so lots of sweeping. We try to take our shoes off when we come in so that we don't track much stuff in. And we kind of stack a lot of shoes up in this section as well. But yeah, this is a really big, awesome compartment. And we keep stuff like extra paper towels when you need to kind of quickly grab them. Um, we often keep our rice cooker in here because our rice cooker has a nice carrying handle. You stick it in there, um, that way you can pull it out. But you could fit lots of kitchen appliances and things in there. Um, I bring my coffee grinder and my beans and I grind my coffee on the road. Uh, not really sure what that is, but lots of good space there. Over here, we have another little, little thing I think you put Maybe magazines or books in there. Maybe maps. We do uh, bug spray. Yeah, we do bug spray. Our level is in there and um, sunscreen. And a flashlight. And obviously a fly sweater. And we've got our um, fire extinguisher there. All right. Should we talk about this? This guy props up so you have a longer um, counter space. It's very finicky and I often. Oh, today you do it on the first try. try. Yeah. yeah, it usually takes me like five. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh wait, so hang on. We gotta show them how this door works too. So let's just kind of take a look at this right here. You've got your screen door, and this is the door that's usually the one we're using when we're cooking. Oh, coming in. Yeah. Yeah. So we keep this pretty much closed. Keep the bugs out and all. Um, you slide that over, and then you just kind of pop, and then you are open. I've and seen then a lot of Airstream owners too. You can keep it closed. A lot of Airstream owners have um, gotten these customized right here. And this is kind of designed so you like don't push your screen with your hand. 
and it kind of acts like a strong steel reinforcement, but you can actually get some made that have your name in them and different things like that and replace the ones that come with it. Yeah, and that's one of the things we haven't really done with this camper yet. We put a lot of stickers and things on our last camper, really customized it, customized it, made it our own. We haven't done that here, but um, we got to put some stickers up. All right, yeah, and I should take my shoes off. That is a best practice that I usually like to do. Okay, on to the kitchen. So, not a huge fan of this guy. He kind of gets in the way a lot. Useful when you need to cut vegetables and things. I think it looks kind of gross and I can't get these stains out. When we travel, we stick it right there. And it never seems to move. Why not just put it on the floor? Because then it would roll around everywhere and slide. Yeah, I mean, you could lay it flat, but I think you didn't like the idea of putting the cutting board on yeah, the floor. Yeah, I don't like too. the idea of the cutting board being on the floor at all. Um, but it is useful when you need to cut stuff, but we have talked about another option, maybe like a half cutting board because you end up kind of like, okay, oh, got to put the cutting board down and kind of shuffling it around. So, but a big sink and you've got your, um, little sprayer thing too. We keep this with our little, um, soaps and stuff. And then when we travel, we put that down here so it won't, you know, fly around. Um, this is a dehumidifier that we use mostly when we're parked because we live in South Mississippi and it is extremely humid. So we just do that to get the um, yeah. water out of the air. Works anywhere good in the South and East of the Mississippi. Yeah. So underneath here is our trash and cleaning supplies. Not a very big trash can. We fill it up rather quickly, but that's okay. Then we have, you know, our cleaning supplies, things of that nature, trash bags, really huge space, extra Walmart bags. So that's good. All right, on to cutlery. So we just keep a whole set on here. There are certain things that we have just decided live on the camper always, um, like that silverware and all, all of these types of utensils. Um, and then this, this is a really old set of pots. Gosh, how long have we they, had this? They still sell those though. Like it's the, a popular. Yeah, but they're, they're really useful. So you've got your little um, handle. It's a, it's a GSI Stick brand, I think. Like yeah, and, and they nest. They don't take up a whole lot. Let's get that brand on there. That's uh, GSI. Yeah, Bugaboo. Bugaboo. These are really useful and look, they've been through <laughs> some wear and tear, but they've got these little holes, like a little colander. So if you're making pasta or something, you need to drain the water out. You can do that with the little holes. I've managed to do it a few times without spilling the water. Uh, measuring cups, other things that you would need in the kitchen there. Um, Nick put up these handy hooks. Got to get you to shift around, Nick, to see yeah, those. Yeah, I'm going to try to give us a little bit more light as well. but. Um, yeah, we put these, these are just your, what do you call them? What are the little command command strips? Yeah. These are like fancy looking command strips, but I just kind of thought the, the chrome silver look matched with the Airstream and they stay well. Now we do, we leave the soft stuff up here, but we pull all these down when we drive because we don't want them banging up and marking the walls or anything there. Yeah. So that's really nice because you have those things you can just grab right. while you're cooking. I think we were having trouble with the focus there, but just so you make sure you got a good look. Speaking right. of cooking, here is our stove. Gas um, works really, really well. You got three big burners and these little things come off. All right, so good size little oven here to give you some perspective on the size that can fit. Um, this is the widest cookie sheet that you can fit in there. If you have one of those pans that has the little lips on the side, little handles, it will not fit. So just to show you, that's a perfect fit in there. All right. So we'll stay on this side for a minute. This goes back down. We've got two cabinets here. This one is where we keep all of our plates. We've got enough room for plenty of plates, paper plates, napkins. Um, we keep our cups in this additional little um, basket so they're not rolling around and such but none of this stuff really rolls when we move so it's pretty cool um this one is just more kitchen stuff we cook a lot we've got a lot of seasonings so there you have those this is my little water pot boiler because i make my coffee in a french press so i boil my water there and then i use this lovely fella this is my favorite clearly he's got a lot of miles on him 
Um, so I do all my coffee um, with this French press and I mean this thing has been with us for years. Nick keeps telling me I need to get a better way to house it but I mean the box it came in is still hanging in there. They just they make stainless ones that we wouldn't have to worry about the glass but other than that it does the job. Love it. Um, also other things like my coffee and creamer and stuff like that. Coffee's a big part of the kitchen. Absolutely. Um, okay, let's move on to the fridge and freezer. So freezer, do you want to switch places with me? Yeah, let me swing around here. All right, freezer and fridge are huge. Um, right now it's pretty empty because we have cleaned out this stuff. Um, to give you some perspective, that's, Cotton Blue's cheesecakes, the best cheesecakes on the planet. That's a big box, dude. That's a big box, and you got two of them in there and still plenty of room. Every time we pack the camper, we are always amazed at how much stuff can fit in here. We will load up that laundry basket full of stuff, and we'll load it all in here, and then we're like, oh, that's still only a quarter of the space. So just to give you an idea, like this is a tall, skinny thing of lemonade. And it fits in there no problem. So, I mean, just like tons of condiments. You can just fit a lot, a lot of stuff in there. And it stays nice and cold. Got a microwave. And it is convection, though we've never actually used that. Yeah, because we actually, some units, people opt to not have the oven. And they just do the convection microwave. But we have the oven, so we really don't use the convection side of the microwave. The microwave, for me, here's the thing. It pulls a lot of power. And this is a 38 amp camper. It's not a 50. So if the air conditioner is running and you need to run the microwave, it's probably going to trip the breaker. Yeah. Um, so whenever we need to run the microwave, we're like, turn the air off, we got to run the microwave. It's a little bit of an inconvenience, but then again, it's still a microwave. We don't convenient. use the microwave that, that much, but sometimes you need it. All right, back to this cabinet where I do keep that cookie sheet, um, a drying mat. We've got some cutting boards in there. It's a really big cabinet. I mean, Let's I've got see. a whole can... pan in there. Better look it's pretty deep we're gonna crank up the light here a little bit and see if you can't see that yeah i mean it goes back all the way to the this outside skin basically it's got that even curvature shape up in that cabinet there yeah all right another favorite spot for storage is this guy this is the um pantry where we keep you know just all of the stuff again coffee creamer um, always important. So it's looking a little sparse because, you know, we just got back. Um, when we, when we leave, this is a lot more full. Oh, that's we, that's only where you want to keep your, your quick grab stuff. Like, you know, your bars that the kids like and stuff like that. We have this convenient little... Perfect little spot for toaster, yeah. your toaster. Right there. It goes. it goes right in there. Get in there. All right. And last but not least of the kitchen, this guy. So I'll let Nick explain more, but he actually switched this door. So on the 25 foot camper, this cabinet's original intention was clothing. It was a closet. And there's actually two closets kind of like this. There's another one in the back, but you see like that's a closed bar right there. That black bar, let me get the focus on. Yeah, so that's the idea. And originally this cabinet door was on this side and we one of the first things we did was we reversed it and i'm really pleased with the move we didn't need to hang that many clothes right we store most of our clothes kind of folded up or rolled up in the back so it just kind of made sense to turn this into more of a, a cabinet that serves the kitchen so we put in this is where we keep the health food yeah right and all the chips and stuff um you've got your shelving that we put in here and that's not bolted or anything it just stays in there pretty snug and get a good focus on that for you. And then, um, of course, we added the paper towel holder there. That's where it kind of made sense for me to put one, and I've been pleased with that spot as well. It's worked out really well. The only time this does not work is when someone is in the shower, and they yeah. have this closed, which I'll show you in a sec, and then you have no access to the pantry. Good point. That's the only time that it's an inconvenience. Up here, you've got a lot more storage. We keep bags and stuff up here, just mishmash. All right, on to this door which is broken. Semi-broken. Semi-broken. It's still functional. It still functions. You just have to pull it up like this. So, so it, it came loose from here. This little thing broke. And we actually have the part to replace it. Should be able to fix it pretty easily. So in the meantime, we just kind of bring it, it over. It's still fine. So there, but like I said, if I'm in here showering, 
um, you cannot get to that cabinet. So we just do this for now, let it drop. All right. And we should show them too, before we jump back to the bathroom section here in the kitchen, this is where you have your readouts of your battery, um, which right now you're not gonna have an accurate readout because we're plugged into the wall. So it's not really 13.6. Um, you have your fresh water tank readouts, your gray and your black tank readouts all right there. And then below this particular Airstream is equipped with an inverter, which not a converter, but an inverter. And this allows you to basically use plugs when you're running off of your battery. So if you were big into, you know, sleeping in a Walmart parking lot or at a national park where you don't have a plug, you can actually use that inverter to kind of use the batteries of the Airstream to power things like laptops and whatever. Yeah, we don't use that a lot. No. All right, on to the bathroom. So pretty decent size, and maybe that's just because I'm used to the Scamp, which had a tiny bathroom, but you have the full separate shower from the bathroom. Our old camper had one of those shower toilet things all in one. We mm. never used that it's shower. It's not a fan. Yeah, it was functional for a bathroom, yeah. but not a shower. Right. And in that camper, we had to wash our hands and face in the same sink where we wash our dishes. That was we don't weird. have to do that here. Yeah. So we have a full sink here, toilet, um, a lot of storage in here. So hang on, let me get a good shot because you were kind of ahead of me. So we got the sink here. Um, we added what the toothbrush holder there. Yes. That's added. This already was in here. This was in here. Here's your mirror. Show them how the mirror works. I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to do that. Well, you know, it's got the magnifying side. There you go. Yeah. So on to the storage. We keep another little um, trash can in here. Mm -hmm. Hair dryer down there. Again, plenty. I mean, we don't even use half of the storage in this thing. And that's even when we go on long trips. Like if we're on a trip that's, you know, what's the longest we've been on? 19 days, 20 days or so? Yeah. And we're good on storage for that amount. Yeah. I don't know if you can really see this, nor, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. Toilet paper. All right. We've got a whole nother huge section here where you can just keep more toiletry items. Um, usually Nick keeps his toiletry bag in there. And then there's some um, toilet treatment tabs. More storage, toothpaste and all. We kind of keep this out once we're to a spot. When we travel, we put it back up. We like to keep stuff um, in these little dollar store buckets so that they're not flopping around and um, rolling around while we travel. So just items that you would need in your home. Um, we'll talk about what we do with that top lip up above your head there. I will. Okay. Give me a minute. First aid, all the band-aids, all the hairspray, all the contact solution you need. When we're parked, we use this huge section as more storage. So to give you some size perspective, you can fit a lot of stuff up there. Um, so I will keep my makeup up there sometimes, my contact stuff, um, makeup remover. Nick kind of puts his stuff down here, deodorant, all that stuff can fit up there once we're stopped and you've got your little shade for privacy. A few other things that I want to point out here in the bathroom um, that are important if you're considering buying an Airstream. I think it was in 2015 that the Flying Cloud started doing this. It might have been 14, it might have been the year before this, but that's these right here. This is duct air, which is a big deal because originally you would just have your air conditioner unit right here in the middle. And it basically would be conditioning with cool air through the entire camper from one spot. The duct air, of course, kind of pipes that air to different parts of the camper, including the bathroom, the back bedroom and all that. So this little vent in the middle here, Leslie's gonna demonstrate it. That's your vent fan. And of course that's used for when you're using the restroom and you need to vent the place out. We also will run it sometimes when we are showering. There's one above the shower, just like it. And sometimes it's good to run two if you're trying to keep just moisture outside of the camper. All right, so here we've got our hot water heater. Nick installed this little guy to kind of keep it so that somebody to just bump into it like a child. And yeah, turn it and on. that was just like a little cover that I found online. I had to use a Dremel tool to kind of make the hole a little bigger, but then it just sticks on both sides. It's been great. It keeps yeah. like our six-year-old from coming in here and thinking it's a light switch and turning on the hot water when we didn't want it on. Yeah, so we got electric and propane. We almost always use electric. This is a light switch right there. 
All right, on to the shower. Um, now we do have an issue with the shower and that is that this door has fallen, so to speak. Um, and it will not open. It, it, it gets impeded by this lip here. Um, but Nick put a magnet of all things. Yeah, so it was like this little like hinge system. And there's a kit apparently that I can order from Airstream, the mothership in Ohio, that will help me fix this or I can just bring it into the service shop and I'm sure they can repair it. I think it's a known issue with these doors. But my Band-Aid fix was using magnets to kind of shimmy underneath there and allow the door to swing open and closed. And we just pull the magnets out when we're traveling. It seems to work. Um, the shower could use a cleaning, but, oh, let me turn the light on. Pretty big shower. Got the arm that comes off and it's got a little button here to turn the water on and off too, along with the, you know, the dial thing. The uh, razor holder and the soap holder that was added again, a command. command strip type thing that we just put in there. Um, I mean, a uh, clothesline that you can put your wet swimsuits and stuff. We use that sometimes. Leslie, like how much of a sacrifice is it the shower in here? Like, do you feel like when you get back home, are you like, oh, I'm so glad to have my shower? Are you kind of like, no, I'm good. Um, I mean, it's, it's not your shower at home. The water pressure isn't as hard and obviously you just don't have as, no, as much space. But is it a hassle? No, not really. It's it's pretty comfortable. The water gets really hot really fast, so I never have any trouble with hot water. Um, it's really just not that hard. Yeah, I'm pretty cool with it. Like, I mean, it's not... If I had to, I could shower in there the rest of my life. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, first world problems, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, you got another vent in here. We use these dollar store little caddies to keep all of our stuff in there. And... I insisted on a hair catcher in the drain because between girls, our hair clogs up the drain. I didn't want to be responsible for that. So we added a little hook here too that we use for towels. So when we're drying towels, we use the bar in the bathroom. We sometimes will hang towels from this little, again, command hook. And then of course we'll throw some over the door of the shower. You can also close this guy and have the entire bathroom area or um, if you don't need to. Yeah, if everyone's up front, side. we just close the front and then yeah. you kind of use the back as a dressing room. Right. Which is the bedroom, which we're going to head into. Speaking of the bedroom, this is kind of, this took some selling of me to have twin beds. When Nick first said we were going to have twin beds, I was like, what? This is not Dick Van Dyke. We are not having twin beds. But in the 25 foot model that's not a twin bed, what you have is a queen, but it is turned this direction. And what that means is this person can easily get out of the bed. The person on the other side has a very small walkway. Now the 27 foot or 28 foot, they have a, lot, a larger walkway, but the 25 has a really skinny walkway to get around. So it means somebody is like barrel rolling out of the bed to get to the bathroom. And, and you also have much room to change clothes, like get dressed in the morning. Exactly. Whereas we have this huge space that I will show you more down here in a sec, but, um, I've loved it. I've really enjoyed the twin beds. It has not been a sacrifice at all. They are very comfy. So I'll start from the bottom. And the previous owner actually installed these, so I've never experienced life without it, but I can tell you that it is great. He put this extra little piece of wood here. Yeah, it's two pieces. It's like one piece, piece that's horizontal. And this piece. Yeah. And it keeps the bed from shifting. And again, I've never experienced it without it, but I highly recommend doing that. There's a lot of people talking about like, hey, what's the solution for this? And, and that's what we do. Yeah, works really great. So storage. This is where we keep our dirty laundry. So it's a really big cabinet. We keep it in this bag here. Let's see if I can get down there real quick. And it really has a lot of space for clothes. All right, over here, this would be my shoe storage section. As you can see, I got a lot of shoes in there still. It's huge. I've got a big old yoga mat up in here and I still have room. I've never actually filled this whole space, but um, that's a really big little space there. Then on the other side, this one's not as deep. I think this is the user manual, mm -hmm. something I've never read. Um, and Nick's shoe compartment, which you'll see is markedly smaller than mine. 
So it's probably half as deep on that side. All right, uh, on to the beds. Again, um, they're a standard twin. So the bedding and all that we use is a standard twin. This is our summer bedding. We also have winter bedding that's much thicker, but um, this is our thinner summer series. TV back here um, works great, just like the other one. This is a shallow kind of storage area. When we have all the kids with us, we need more um, clothing space up there. When we don't, it's just kind of miscellaneous. Here is the main closet space for each of us. My closet, it may look kind of small. It's actually really large. I can fit many, many <laughs> stacks of clothes in here. I also keep this little guy who um, houses like my flat iron, uh, additional like body lotion, just stuff, my journal, keep a journal. Same size over here, so that's Nick's side. Um, okay, this guy, huge, wonderful, you'll notice it has a little baby gate, and that is because it's a very heavy drawer, and we have filled it to the max, and one time we came in the camper after we had been driving, and this entire drawer was on the floor, it actually took a chunk out of the floor, and we said, oh no, we've got to secure this somehow, so we use this little baby gate thing. And it, it has its own security lock, like it is a... I a mean, it's a strong drawer. And it held for a long time, but I think we just had too much weight in it. We so. had a way too much, because when you have a drawer this big, you just pack it full of stuff. So, I mean, we just keep everything in here. Sound machine, we have this little clock that we keep right here when we're stopped. Um, just tools, rubber bands, every camper needs lots of rubber bands. Um, chargers. There's my iPad charger. There you go. Nice. Speaking of chargers, um, they have these little ports over here. So we keep, we try to keep on the camper uh, an Apple Watch and a phone charger, um, two on each side. Although, nope. only one of these guys. Yeah, I find that strange that I didn't get one of those. I mean, we could switch sides of the bed if you want. No, nah, I like my one. side. But I do have two charger ports, but um, when I need that to plug in the hair dryer or whatever, I have to go over there. And then, of course, you still got your speakers on the back end, you both do. corners. And then these are reading lamps. Uh, yeah, and they're super bright, and they can move around like this. So. Yeah, and I, I believe, I don't, I think those lamps are 12 volt. And just so you know, like if you don't have a camper, some stuff runs off battery. In other words, some lights run off battery, and I believe those are 12 volts. But like these overhead lights that we have, those you need to be plugged into shore power. And that's just kind of a difference. Like that's the way most campers are set up. You have different options for your lights. And while I'm over here, there's your air conditioning slash heat and gas heat as well is controlled from that thermostat by the back bed here. Yeah. Also got these same little things. These go all the way down. These windows are open right now. They're like propped open, but you still have your screen to keep the bugs out. Yep. And then again, back here, we the, don't have this open. The panorama view back here. I mean, it, I mean, we happen to have a lot that sits on the woods and just sitting back here, it feels like you're camping. Yeah. Love the big windows. Yep. All right. Last but not least, closet. Oh yeah, go ahead. So Nick put some more hooks up here. We put things like hats and stuff up there. Um, this is our closet. We hang clothes here and you can get a decent amount in here. But like you said, most of the stuff that we're packing is pretty casual. So we're not needing to have a bunch of dressy or, you know, stuff that needs to be hung up. Um, so, you know, we hang stuff in there. You got another decent amount of storage down there. Um, our towel system is that we are, have color coded towels. So each Human has a different color towel so that we can differentiate which is which. And that's about it. Did I we'll miss see. anything, Nick? Well, we got the fantastic fans, which you haven't really mentioned. Um, there's two of these, one in the back bedroom. Do yeah. you know how to flip the switches there? Yep. So it... Flip the other one? Flip what other one? See, she does it now. That's how little she does it. Oh. That's right there. Yeah. In fact, the last time I tried it, I tried to crank it with my hand. Yeah. You weren't here when I did that. No. And then I realized, oh, that happens automatically. So these, of course, help circulate air um, through the camper. There's one in the front and one in the back. And they also have a rain sensor in it that we have put to the test. They do work when a few raindrops start to hit. It just automatically closes. Automatically close. All right. And anything else, Leslie? Um, little things that we have found you need. A rug. Yep. That was something when we first set out, we were like, oh, when you get out of the shower, you're wet. You're dripping. Just you need a rug. 
Um, we try to bring lots of towels, lots of hand towels, so um, you're not going through quite so many paper towels. Um, Towel? I can go through this one. Oh yeah, that's where we keep our that's our Reynolds you know, wrap and foil yeah. and plastic bags. And then t explain to them what that little black thing is down there by the underneath the drawer. This? Yeah. This is a gas detector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to make sure you're not leaking gas. So we try to keep it pretty ventilated when we're using the gas. <clears throat> and kind of in that same vein here, this particular, everyone who has it, an Airstream, at least around this time, these years, say that the smoke detector in here is super sensitive. And then I found the same thing as soon as we got it. Like, I mean, the slightest, like you just turn on the gas and the thing goes off. So that is a replacement. I got a different one that is a smoke detector slash carbon monoxide detector. And there's another one in the back. So one random thing to note is that the fridge is not magnetic. <laughs> um, as many times as I've tried to put a magnet on here, it does not stay. So Nick has put a little sticky magnet strip on there so that we can um, put our child's artwork. Right it might there. be a map of the campground or whatever makes sense for you. Yeah. So that is the interior of our 2015 Flying Cloud. It is our home away from home. We love it. Every time that we go out, um, we just say we love it even more and we want to plan even more trips. Probably every time we're on a trip, we start planning our next trip because that's how much we love it. And we want to see more young people like us who buy campers. So um, hit us with comments in the comment section if you have questions, we'd be happy to answer them. What's next? Let's go outside. All right, so now we're gonna start outside a little bit here. First, we're gonna start with this one item, which is probably one of my least favorites of the, I guess you call them third party items on the Airstream camper. And that is this jack. It's just a little finicky at times. Like it says you're supposed to go up and down with this little switch. Sometimes I hit up and it works and you actually go up. Sometimes I hit down. Sometimes it gets completely reversed but it still works, it gets the job done, and that's really what's most important. It's got a little light here. If you need to be hooking up or disconnecting at night, we normally try to come into a campground when we still have daylight. You've got your plug right here, which of course sends your power to your truck and your truck back to the camper, which powers your brakes as well as your lights on your camper. Um, as we go down here, a few other things worth pointing out. This is your emergency brake. So you hook this to your truck if for some reason the trailer came detached from the truck that would trigger the brake system on the camper and hopefully at least slow it down if not stop it you have your emergency chains here that you want to hook up to your truck as well as having it hooked up to the hitch um, you've got your hitch release right here i always like to keep the lock on this hitch release even when we actually are um, going on trips like you want to make sure this is locked and in place and then when i'm in storage i also put another lock right there just to make sure the airstream is secure um, on the outside here you've got this window which i've opened up because this window is opened up and usually when we get to a campground we do open these but these are your rock protection so this is like a plexiglass cover on the front of the windows because otherwise you would end up with shattered windows and a dented front if you didn't have this type of protection all of these do come off for cleaning but functionally speaking when you're on a trip this is about the only section that you're gonna open up. Unless you're trying to get under here to clean, you're probably not gonna pull these off to like let more light in. We usually keep this, which does cause it to be a little bit more tinted on the inside, but no major thing there. But you can see a couple spots here, like they've taken rocks and that would have been a shattered window. Otherwise I'd much rather be on that plastic protection there. All right, so now we're gonna go over here to the side of the camper. I'm gonna start with the fact that we have this awning here. This awning is um, a nice feature. It was, I think, a little upgrade when the original person purchased this camper. Um, and it's an awning on the back over the rear bedroom window. You have this awning on this side, and then you have another big awning on the other side, and that's the other side where you would typically have your patio set up. But this awning here is great. It's easy to pull out and quickly retract or put back in place to simply do that right there. And then there's an actual awning tool, which I don't have out right now, but you would lock it in place right there. But what's so great about this awning is it helps a lot with temperature. Uh, when the sun's beating down on this side of the camper, keeps things a little bit cooler, including things like your refrigeration unit. Um, here you have the refrigerator for the camper. One thing I did change out pretty quickly when we got this, the original fan for the refrigerator made a lot of noise. It made like a rattling noise that I would hear inside the camper ordered this uh, particular fan. It is a, it says Noctua if somebody needs it, NF S12A FLX. And I wired it in and replaced it with the old fan. It is super silent. We never hear it running. And it was a pretty easy job to, to wire this together there. So that was a nice little upgrade. Um, also on this side, you have this compartment here. This one 
is the one where we store our weight distribution bars. And I was, always have kept um, a kit like this. It's pretty slick, just kind of a little container to keep all your lubricants because you need to be greasing the, the bumper, the ball, um, greasing your weight distribution uh, bars. I keep glass cleaner here. I also keep a couple different types of cans of WD-40 ant spray. And I keep this 303 aerospace protectant. This is really used for the window gaskets. For whatever reason in this design, these windows have a tendency to stick to these gaskets. So for example, a lot of times if you aren't lubricating the gaskets, say once every three months or so, someone will go to pop the windows and they don't want to pop. So you go to the inside, you try to lift them and they're stuck. So then what you have to do is come around with one of these tools or even just using a credit card. It's basically kind of like a credit card. It's a little plastic thing, maybe used for painting or spackling or something. And I just kind of use it to kind of slip in here and then it pulls the window apart and gets it unstuck. You want to be gentle because this is glass and it could shatter on you if you don't take good care of it and do it gently. So that's kind of the, uh, the method that we like to use there. But again, if you're using this lubricant, you usually will prevent a lot of sticking with the windows altogether. So that is that. We do keep a couple pull noodles here. These are to protect the um, bars from the awning on the other side. If you have people running around and those bars are exposed, you just quickly pop on those pull noodles. As I promised, this is a real world walkthrough. We do have a couple problems with these locks. Uh, I need to replace this particular one. It doesn't lock for the time being. This is your lower refrigerator access. I've never really had a reason to do much with it, but that is why you have that there. Okay, right here, you've got your plug-in. This is a 38, a 30 amp camper, um, as we mentioned a little earlier in this video. And you also have your TV and your satellite port. So if you were running, say a campground cable or a satellite dish, it would come through this port here. We rarely do this. We find that usually over the air or downloaded videos, um, or if we have good enough internet, just streaming works good enough for us. Top one here, this is your fresh water. Like if you're on city water, it would pump in through here on this particular valve. That's typically what we're doing. If you need to fill your tank, your access is actually gonna be on the other side. And this right here is your shower hose. I don't have the keys on me right now, so I won't be able to unlock it. But it's like if you were at a beach, you've got a little like shower nozzle that you can spray your feet off with real quickly here. Um, you've got this right here. This is important. This is your valve for spraying out your black tank, your sewage tank. Um, it's tricky on how you gotta do this. And, and I'll try to quickly give you an explanation. Like you read this, it says, do not use the tank flush valves unless the full way termination valve is in the open position, may result in an unsanitary condition leading to illness or personal injury. So what does that mean? Well, that means if you're pumping water into your black tank to flush it out, they're saying you need to have your black release valve open. So all that water goes in and blows right back out. I find that if you have this wide open, your black tank's probably not gonna get as clean as it should. So what I do, and I could probably do a whole nother video on this, is I pump the water in and I'm just very careful to make sure I evacuate the water before it fills all the way up. The reason I do that is I find when you bring that water up to say 75% or so of filled on the black tank, you get a better flush of the entire system as opposed to just leaving it open. It's just in, out, in, out. You don't really get to clean all the sides of the inside of that black tank. But again, when I do that, I set timers on my watch, timers on my phone. I stare at the levels of the black tank. I really wanna make sure I don't have an issue where you actually were to fill the black tank completely and then it starts to come through the toilet and through the floorboards and you end up with this huge mess. Just quick little bit Eel. of advice there. Right, so here you have your um, hot water heater. Uh, you've got, of course, it's electric or gas and that whole gas heating takes place here. This is your valve for the winter time. If you need to drain it completely, which is what we do, um, you would actually undo your valve right there. As for the uh, tires, you'll notice um, on each of the tires we do run with a TPMS system that feeds into the dashboard of our vehicle and you can actually see on the dash what the readings are on all the tires and it has alarms as well if for some reason one of these was to lose um, temperature or if, if this was to lose um, pressure very quickly, it would set off an alarm and it also monitors the temperature of the sidewalls of the tires. So I can see that as I'm rolling down the road. And when I'm in storage for long-term, I do cover up each of these tires just to make sure we're not getting any dry rot taking place there. Back compartment here, you've got um, most of my stuff dealing with electrical hookups as well as water hookups and 
These are just X chocks. I don't use these as specifically as just chocks. I actually do chalk the tires as well, but I find these help with stabilizing the system a little bit, the entire camper. So I put these in between each of those wheels there. Come around back. All right, so we added the, this bike rack to this camper that did not come this way attached. So I think we bought it for, what about? Four fifty, maybe five hundred dollars. Um, it is, I think, one of the few Airstream approved bike racks. Um, you aren't supposed to carry more than seventy-five pounds on it. You never really want to load too much on the back of your camper, anyhow, because it can cause it to be off balance and fishtail, and you can end up with all sorts of problems. Um, I did the install myself. Is it perfect? No. I mean, when you open this door, for us, you'll see that the door does not quite clear the bike rack. See, it stops right there. Now I probably could take it apart and try to redo it again and get it just right, um, but still pretty functional for us. We can store things like camp stoves. We put a lot of games, our, our mat for our camper all goes in this compartment here. Now, Leslie, stay right there. This other compartment is where I keep our sewage hose. I actually have to unhook something right here. That's where I like to store all of our sewage stuff. Um, it's just kind of a dirty little box where you can keep that, what they call the stinky slinky in there to help empty your sewage tank out. Um, this bike rack, when you pull the bikes off, of course you can fold it up and it's a little bit more compact in that position. This is the awning tool I made mention of a little earlier. It's a zip D awning tool, but it's uh, designed to just quickly grab and pull out the awnings like that. We're not gonna pull this out completely right now because we do have the bikes in place, but that is the rear awning there. Some of you who are already Airstream owners may be wondering what's going on with my camera here. I did install this camera myself. I was very hesitant to drill through my skin to install this rear view camera for a few reasons. One, I think these cameras may change over the next few years and I didn't wanna necessarily be stuck with this particular camera. And also it's like anytime you're gonna drill in the skin and go through here, you open up the potential for leaks. And I just didn't really wanna do that. I didn't want that commitment. So kind of found a workaround. It's not the prettiest of workarounds, but I put two very small holes in the very top skin of this rear awning. And I'm actually mounted onto there. And then I ran the wire right behind this bar on the awning and tapped into my rear light. So it's more of a temporary hookup for a rear camera. Uh, I found the solution worked for me and it allows me to go a different direction in the future um, if I choose to. Um, over here, of course, you see the windows and then you have your full rear or full side awning rather. And I probably could do a full video on this awning another time. I'm not gonna pull it out completely right now. Um, we may do another video on that because it's probably about a 10, 15 minute walkthrough on how to pull that awning out. They do make a lot of campers that have automatic awnings. I personally prefer the mechanical one. I just find that it's easier to maintain. You have fewer problems with it. I mentioned the access spot for the fresh water. That's gonna be right here. It is under lock and key as well, I guess, just so the idea that somebody doesn't come and contaminate your water in any way. And then of course, we have this compartment here. And this is where I keep things like my drill, which has my quick stabilizer. So you can pop that on there. Quick stabilizer attachment. And you can quickly raise and lower those, but also there's a manual or mechanical tool that you can use as well if you don't want to use the drill. Um, here you've got your leveling blocks. Uh, I use mostly these underneath the stabilizers. We have a different set of leveling blocks that we use for there. One thing I don't love about the design on this particular Airstream is they do have lights in here, which is nice and convenient. But the switch, it just takes like the slightest rub and they'll kick on. So what that could lead to is you draining your battery and not knowing it. So say if the drill was to shift and somehow kick that light on while I'm driving around and then I park and I'm not plugged in, that light would, not, would actually be on the entire time and could potentially drain the battery there. You do have a plug for the exterior here. So if you wanted to work out on the patio setting, plug in a laptop or whatever it need be. And uh, of course these steps, um, this is interesting. The steps have been replaced. I think it was around 2019 or 2020, Airstream went to a different type of step. And everyone I know 
who's had the older Airstreams and then ones with the newer steps prefer the older steps. I think the new ones are just a little flimsier and these are pretty heavy duty, probably way more, but it's just like a, a good steel step and just easier to open and close from what I understand as opposed to the new steps. One thing you do need to pay attention to in the design here, this is actually your furnace. We don't use the furnace a whole lot. We hadn't been in climates where necessarily we had to kick it on, but it does vent here. So I'm guessing if you're running the furnace, you would not want to leave the door open. I guess the logic is why would you have your door open if you were in need in a time for running your furnace? But if that thing was venting, I wouldn't want it venting up against the skin of the Airstream there. And this vent right here is actually your vent for your stovetop, uh, what do you call it, updraft, I guess, where it kind of sucks out any of the steam smells and so forth. You do have that light right on the outside there. It's not the best light. We actually have some lights we can hook onto our awning as well, but um, it's pretty bright. LED right there, and then you have a little light on a separate switch that is for your stairs. Um, this one sometimes I'll leave on overnight. I don't like to leave that one because I don't want to blind my neighbors. One other thing that uh, I want to talk about is the battery pack here. This is not any type of fancy battery setup. You have um, gel mat batteries, AGM batteries, and you also have lithium batteries. This is your traditional lead acid battery. I do have to monitor the water levels. You pop off these four caps and you gotta watch the levels in there. Now, this camper has a converter that's not a multi-stage converter. What does that mean? Well, that means that the converter doesn't really know when to quit charging the batteries, and that's not the best thing. Would like to replace that converter. We haven't gotten around to it yet, but the reason it's a bad thing is because as it's charging the batteries, it doesn't really know when to stop, and then the fluids in the batteries can overcharge. So like I'm plugged in to my house right now, it's possible this could boil over and then your cells end up being dry and you damage the battery per, um, permanently and then you actually have to replace it. I do have this switch here. This was added on by the previous owner and it allows you to flip it off and it turns off any type of connection to the battery. It's good for your long-term storage and keeps from draining your battery. Up top here, you have uh, your two propane tanks. These are the taller of the propane tanks, bigger than what you typically see on a gas grill. Um, you can switch back and forth as to which one you're pulling. In terms of gas usage, we really do not burn through a lot. I mean, we use it for our refrigerator sometimes, and of course we use it for our stove, and we can go for at least a month, probably more on one tank. It's pretty easy to pop one out, go get that one refilled while you flip over to the other. Right here, I've used this once. It's when I had a weird hookup where the power was just really closer, and it made more sense to plug in my 30 amp line into here rather than the one on the side. But it is nice to have two, if you need it. And you also do have a little propane hookup down here as well. If you wanted to run a hose, to like a gas grill, I've never used it. I do have the, the tube or the cable uh, to actually hook one up, but uh, we haven't really had to put that to use yet. So we really appreciate you watching our video, right? Yeah. And uh, we know there's a lot more that we can go into depth on here. So really we wanna hear from you. If there's something like you say, hey Nick, I wanna learn more about how to use the awning, or hey, tell us a little bit more about battery maintenance, or uh, tell us more about your bike rack and how you installed it. We will certainly consider doing those videos. So it's really up to you. You let us know if there's something you wanna see. The main purpose of this video was just to kind of give you a walkthrough, really for the person, I guess, who is really serious about getting an Airstream or just any type of camper. Like, what do I need to know? Right, a day in the life. And, and that's the one thing that I can't show you right now is just daily camping. And that's the best part about having a camper is You've got a home away from home. Everywhere you go, you've got all of the comforts of your home, just smaller. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks everyone.